How's it going guys? This is Mustard here and today I'm bringing you something that I've been thinking about for a while since Nightwolf came out. As many of you know, Kano was the first character that I mained in this game. I was playing Ripper pretty much exclusively for the first couple of months at least. Um, so I know quite a lot about the character. I've got some competitive experience with him under my belt and some good results. Uh, and I've been looking at Ancestral Gift Nightwolf since Nightwolf came out and I've been comparing the the kit and general tool set of both characters and that's where the title of this video comes from. I think that there is a strong point to be made that Ancestral Gift Nightwolf has completely and utterly invalidated Ripper in the game's current competitive state and I'm going to explain why. So right now I've just spent a little bit of time kind of you know jotting down some notes as to which uh, numbers and damage and frames both characters have as well as their utility and I'm going to compare them both side by side and I'll let you guys make up your own minds but I'm going to put forward this case as to something I firmly do quite believe which is kind of ironic even though right now I'm I'm a Frost player and haven't actually played Kano since the patch. Uh, I have played quite a lot of Ancestral Gift Nightwolf to kind of make this comparison. So I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to get right into it. So this is all going to be done in one take. So no editing here, my friends. I'm just going to get it all done in one go for you. And, and we'll see what's what. So first things first, let's look at a list of some of the most useful things a character has and see how they shape up. So Kano, his fastest high is an eight frame standing one. This leads to a tick grab on block if I get him to block, obviously. This is going to lead to a tick grab for my command throw. Um, when you finish this string, you're plus two, but there is a gap in between the second and third hit. Um, he also has a nine frame high, which is a standing two. This also leads into a tick grab and, of course, is Kano's launcher. Uh, this will lead into what you've all seen a hundred times. You launch and you go for whatever damage and here you go. That's your one bar right there. Um, whereas Nightwolf, his options are, comparatively to the 8 frame standing high that Kano has, his standing one is 7 frames. Also, the 1-1 one, one on block is a tick throw, and uh, will we'll, we'll tick as well if they block it. Um, but the bonus here is Nightwolf standing one, despite being 7 frames and faster, uh, can also go into plus frames the same way Kano's does. If you go for 1-1-2, one, one, there's a gap there the exact same way that Kano has it. But Nightwolf has the privilege to go 1-1-1, one, 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 which is safe on block, and on hit is an easy hit confirm into a solid knockdown, which a command grab character really, really thrives off. You can effortlessly turn his standing one string on block into nothing to be safe, and on hit into a decent amount of damage for a bar like that, and his normal shoulder charge as well still retains quite a lot of Oki, which is already quite strong. So comparatively, Kano's standing one is considerably weaker than Nightwolf's, but he does have the launching option off of a close range standing two, um, which is, is something, right? It leads to Kano's damage, you see it happen all the time, whereas Nightwolf doesn't have access to a traditional high launcher off of his standing one in Ancestral Gift. He does get much stronger knockdowns and more safety off of it as he doesn't have to commit as hard due to his standing one being safe. So for a first point, that's pretty seesaw, right? It's pretty, you know, the damage is, is arguably better for Kano as his standing two leads to a launcher, but it's harder to confirm... Um, it's harder to kind of generally use in the neutral and stay safe, whereas Nightwolf has this incredible standing option uh, with his standing one to be safe and still get decent damage and a good knockdown. But this is where it gets a lot more um, in the favor of Nightwolf when it comes to their character's mids. So for Kano, his fastest mid is a 13 frame back one, which is this. This is not hit confirmable, it is safe on block. On hit does 5% and if you want damage you can turn it into the knives and spend a bar and do, you know, um, 107 for no bar and 155 for bar spent. But then you're back at this kind of range where, you know, Kano doesn't necessarily really want to be at the moment. But if you want to get something off your back one, that is literally your only option as the back one is not hit confirmable and is just a single hit by itself. He also has a 16 frame back three, which we know leads into a crushing blow if it counter hits, which is good damage. Um, but this button by itself will do 11%, uh, 110 on hit, and on block it's minus four. So in the mids department, Kano has obviously always been lacking in that regard it's definitely been a weaker side of him as a character from launch to now and this is definitely not changing whereas you now look at Nightwolf who uh, in the mids department has 
a 13 frame, so the fastest mid Kano has, Nightwolf has one uh, the same. This isn't even Nightwolf's fastest button, but a 13 frame forward one, which is an advancing mid. This is hit confirmable, because you could do forward one, two. This is safe by itself. It's minus seven, the forward one, two. On hit, you can turn it into this for a bar. You can turn it into the normal shoulder charge for Oki. Um, and you can keep it safe by just doing these by itself. So already, he matches Kano at worst in the mid's department, but is better because his mid is hit confirmable and is still safe on block. But that's not even where this ends for Nightwolf. Ancestral Gift uh, gets a better option off the back three, which is an 11 frame mid. You can do back three, four, down four to be safe on block if they block it, because this is another hit confirmable mid. Your back three, four can also turn into a grab on hit to do, what is this, just under 20%, I think? Yeah, 193 damage for a string, a single string at that for no bar spent. And this is an 11 frame mid, which means that in every situation a mid is what you need, Nightwolf is going to be better because he's got the advancing mid that's slightly slower, but hit confirmable and can be turned into really good, uh, decent level damage for what Nightwolf and, you know, characters typically get off mids if they're command grab characters. Um, especially if you compare him to, like, Jax and other characters that have fast mids, but also, you know, no launches to make up for it. Nightwolf is better in that regard. And he also has this 11 frame back three, which is, again, a mid and leads into really good damage with this string and on block is, again, completely safe. So in the mids department, Nightwolf is absolutely winning in pretty much every regard you could need. Low pokes. Kano. His down one is seven frame, and on block, if I set him to crouch, will jail a standing one if you're fast enough. Oh, I haven't done this in a little while. There we go. If you're fast enough, we'll jail a standing one. If you're just frame perfect, it will jail a, a standing two as well, um, which as I've described, you know, Kano does get to tick off of his standing one one. He gets launch off of this, which in theory is quite good. His down three, however, is pretty whack. It's nine frames. Um not quite the same level of usefulness its range isn't amazing your down one is pretty much better in almost every regard um but as when it comes to mids kano's only jailing option off the off the down one is to go for a back one this back one will be guaranteed on hit but it's you know you have to hit confirm a poke which is already kind of dangerous it's not really that easy for, for kano to do it and as i've established this back one does not give him a huge amount of reward either so if you do get a down one your best bet is to go for a jailing high every time which can be dangerous if you mistime it or you don't hit confirm it you are going to get poked yourself you are going to get hit by a mid if you're not on point and you might run the risk of dying um to what is effectively again a risk going for tick throws is a gamble going for this because that's a gap is a gamble the two four is if the opponent knows the matchup can be pretty much unsafe no matter what you do uh now let's look at nightwolf nightwolf's pokes his down one is better than kano's it is a seven frame um down one the same so it's the same same speed but he jails the standing one off his if i set kano to crouch i can show you his down one on hit will give him an, an easy standing one, which as we've established is a very, a very, very easy hit confirm on hit into some decent damage into advantage and on block again, completely safe. Uh, he also jails his 11 frame back three. So that's a safer mid option to confirm off of his down one, which is again, nice and good. Uh, and not quite as dangerous for you as the mid itself is faster. And the down one is minus four on block, whereas Kano's is minus five. But the big thing is Nightwolf's down three. He has that godly Kung Lao style down three where he low profiles himself to the ground. This is only um, uh, eight frames, I believe. Let me just quickly double check. I want to make sure I've got this right before I start preaching about it. Here we go. Eight frames down three. The range on this is astonishing. On hit is an effortless hit confirm on uh, the standing one this is this is a really easy to hit confirm poke by this game's standards uh, and the range it gives you means you can get a down three from this range and jail a standing high which is one of the better highs in the game is nightwolf's 111 um also goes lower to the ground so you're less likely to kill yourself you can do it from safer ranges which means you can do this and then you know threaten with your mid from max range and it's pretty much something they have to worry about uh which is very scary so again in the pokes department nightwolf pretty much wins again um, overheads. This is going to be a short one. Uh, Kano's overhead is this 25 frame forward four. On hit, we've all seen this. He gets to do 136 damage, and on block, he's minus seven. Uh, does crushing blow, but it's one of the worst crushing blow requirements in the game, unfortunately. And, uh, Nightwolf. Nightwolf's overhead option is his forward two. This is a 24 frame overhead, but again, you can hit confirm it. You can do forward two one by itself to be minus nine, so it's not safe, but it is... You know, tricky to punish, especially if the opponent expects you to follow up. 
this on hit will do uh, more damage as well. So you're, you're, you're pretty much doing um, more damage with Nightwolf's overheads across the board. If you want to spend a bar, you're going to do even more. If you want to spend none and finish the string, uh, you can get even more. You can go up to 174. So you're pretty much out damaging Kano in every fashion off of the overhead as well. And on block, you have options to mix it up and not be you know death punishable every single time. Uh, and there's more you can do with it. And this overhead string, as we'll talk about in a little bit, also leads to a tip grab, which is that extra layer to help make this overhead a bit more of a threat. So again, in the overhead department, I would say that Nightwolf wins. Again, you know, Kano has a crushing blow on his, but it's the kind of crushing blow that the Kano player has no control over. The, the crushing blow requirement, again, is your opponent has to press block where they've already been hit by it, which only really happens by accident. Players don't kind of instinctively look to do this like if the defender does it wrong and blocks that's their fault it's not really a thing that the kano player has any control over whereas nightwolf has a lot more control with his overhead as it is one frame faster sure but the range on this is is really really strong for what it is as well you know we've, we've always seen players get caught out by this in variation one as well it's just it's quite a scary button especially if you you mix up doing the string by itself um you know finishing the string on hit or going for the tick grab that we'll talk about in a bit or hit confirming it into this for over 200 damage um a lot scarier i would say for nightwolf now this is where things get quite interesting and was actually the main point of my comparison to begin with uh when it comes to special moves both of these characters are actually very very similar to each other in terms of the specials you see all the time that really defines how they are played kano has uh, they both have a charging special. Kano has the Kano Ball, which of course is long distance, can be amplified. Um, you can delay the amplify as well on block to kind of, you know, mix up whether they can punish it or not. Um, but it's always unsafe for the most part. If the opponent knows the matchup, they will be pretty much punishing this near enough every time. Uh, damage wise, you're doing 157 on this from point blank. If you get all the hits and from a distance, you're looking at 137. Um, if you amplify this straight away, there is no gap. The opponent has to just know that you're going to amplify it and block and then punish it again. Uh, Nightwolf, on the other hand, has a charge as well. This is the Rhino Charge. It is, uh, again, a very, very fast move. It is 12 frames, so it's it's slightly slower than the Kano Ball. But again, you know, this isn't really being reacted to. Uh, this will do the same damage on hit no matter what. If you hit this, it's going to do 118. So it is less than the damage department. But the Kano Ball, you only get pressure if you do it meterlessly. If you amplify it, you then get advantage. If you do it meterlessly, you get no advantage whatsoever. Whereas every single time you hit the Rhino Charge, you're going to have advantage and can pressure your opponent. So if you whiff punish with this, if you punish a normal, if you punish a special... Kano can do that, but he's going to knock them away unless he spends the bar, and he's going to get not maximum hit, so he's going to do less damage for it. Nightwolf is going to consistently, bar spent or not, going to have advantage every single time he hits this, whether he's ending combos, whether he's with punishing, whether he's punishing stuff from a distance, he is always going to have advantage, which I would say trumps the slight damage buff that Kano gets over it any time. Uh, the difference here, though, is Nightwolf can also amplify this on block. When he does it as early as possible, there is still a gap. So Nightwolf will always be punishable when he does it, unless the opponent is late with it. But the reward here is whereas Kano hits you trying to press a button, he just gets the amplified version for, let me quickly show you, if he manages to get just the... Um, actually, it might be easier if I uh, control Nightwolf for this. If you do this, I'm going to block the first day and get hit by the second. That did... I mean, was it 8%? Was it 80 damage? six there was even less yes yeah, six you get 60 damage if that happens if nightwolf does it and you uh accidentally get hit by his he gets i didn't actually record it right let me do this quickly uh, i'm gonna do that i don't think i've done this right at all hang on a second okay that should be good Okay, well, pretty much what I'm trying to say is if you get hit by just the second hit, it's a crushing blow and he fully launches you for like over 300 damage. So the difference is if Kano does it and throws his life on the line, he gets 60 damage. If Nightwolf does it and it hits, he gets a crushing blow into a full launcher's worth of damage, which is very, very scary. And to be honest, in real matches, it hits about the same rate. So that makes the shoulder charge by itself really terrifying. Um, because of that threat that we see Kano players try and enforce all the time for 60 damage reward, whereas Nightwolf is doing it for a crushing blow reward, which is, again, already instantly, I would say, in Nightwolf's favour, especially considering he gets the advantage off of every hit as well. 
Kano does have an air ball, however, which I, I think is definitely worth talking about. Kano does have the option to do um, an air ball as well as... Have I done this right? Custom, there we go. Yeah, Kano can do an air ball to whiff punish and have that kind of threat for 70 damage. So that's definitely worth talking about. But again, if the opponent knows the matchup, this is going to be punishable every time as well. This is something that you see typically work at about kind of mid-level play. But in, uh, in high-level matches, this just isn't really a thing. Like, the threat is there but it's not enough to really make the character super terrifying. If they crouch block this, the follow-up, which is minus 10 on paper, so it should be safe with the pushback it has, isn't because all they have to do is crouch block and it's going to go over their head. So if I quickly do that, I'll show you what that looks like. If I'm playing as Nightwolf and my uh, Kano opponent does this and amplifies it as early as possible, if you crouch block this, the follow-up does that. If I crouch block the ball, it goes over my head and now Kano is uh, in serious trouble. And that's why you don't see that work pretty much ever in high level matches is because competitive players know to crouch block the air ball so it's always punishable um for again the tiny reward he gets should it hit his 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 downside is pretty much dying if it doesn't which you're going to see happen most of the time when it comes to projectiles kano has his knife which is a decent projectile it does 60 damage every time it hits he can amplify it to do um 111 to go high mid uh night wolf has a why is this always set to the wrong thing while I'm trying to make a point? He does 70 damage with his arrow, so his does more damage outright. His also it travels much faster through the air. He can hold his. Uh, he can spend bar to cancel out of it as well to give him that kind of like mind game. Am I going to cancel it? He can do it on block for some gimmicky stuff. And from a distance, he can hold it to get some meter back if he wants and really kind of stick you in place. Um, when he amplifies his, instead of the 111, it does 117, so it does more damage. Um, and obviously this is something that it, it's much harder to react to this as well, considering how fast all of these arrows are. So Nightwolf pretty much has the edge in the projectile game as well, in terms of damage and how fast the projectile itself is and his utility to be able to hold it. Uh, command grabs. We are looking at Kano. He does uh, 130 meterlessly with some advantage. And Amplified 180 with, again, a little bit of advantage. So he gets some advantage from both of his grabs, like a bit. Not a huge amount, but he does get some for 130 and 180. Uh, Nightwolf, on the other hand, will be a little bit lower in the damage department as his command grab does 12, 120, with a, about the same amount of advantage, roughly, a little bit more, I think. But the big thing about Nightwolf is he can amplify his command grab to do 150, so it's lower damage across the board, but this is pretty much like, was it like plus 70 advantage, I think, for this? Uh, 69. 69 hit advantage at least. So you have enough time every time you land a command grab with your ending combos ticking into it, whatever it is, you can like jump over to corner reposition and still have loads of advantage. You can shove them to the corner if you want. I'm pretty sure you can like, you know, just move the body around if you want. Um, yeah, that you, you can push them to the corner with some dashes if you want. And Nightwolf already has pretty mental corner carry. Um, so you do less damage, but your your post command grab game is so much scarier across the board because you just have so much more advantage all the time, as well as the ability to side switch at will if you want. So that's another one that's kind of up in the air. Maybe you'll prefer the damage from Kano. Maybe you prefer the post knockdown game of Nightwolf. But the big thing is how you lead into that command grab. Uh, Kano has Rack Off, which is the parry. There's not really much to say about that. If you amplify it, it does a decent amount of damage at 171, but... I mean, you never see it really work. It only parries highs, so it's, it loses to low pokes if they're low, like down ones, down, uh, down threes, down fours even. Um, jump ins, obviously, standing lows. Doesn't parry projectiles or anything like that. It strictly is to be high attacks. And it's quite slow on startup as well compared to some of the other parries. Whereas Nightwolf um, has the Reflect. The Reflect is one of the strongest things about this character and ancestral gift gets the option to amplify this as well to teleport behind so if, if obviously if kano is gonna throw a knife at me like this i can combo from uh let me make him auto block i should have to keep well we just have to keep track on the there we go so that comboed that's not a range that a player will always throw a knife but it's obviously showing that it is possible you can also if you're a bit more confident you can does this work against Kano? I don't think it does. Against pro against projectiles with more hit stun, you can teleport and then back two for a meterless launch. Um, at the very least, you can turn this into, you know... Uh, here we go. Turn that into one bar, near enough 20% for them throwing something at you. Depends on the projectile. Um, but the big thing about this is it parries pretty much most projectiles in the game, as well as some special moves like Jax's Ground Pound. If you reflect um, Collector's Bolo, it's a free combo launch and you know you can get a crushing blow anywhere you want off the shoulder charge. 
Um, this is scary against pretty much every character in the game, right? They have to be worried about this uh, reflect because it's a constant threat. It's quick on startup. It doesn't cost you anything. You can come out of it by letting go of the button whenever you want. You can hold it for a very long time. And this is universal. An ancestral gift gets to use it as a teleport if he wants. He can reflect something and then combo from it. Which I would say is better than the rack off parry in pretty much every single way. Uh, in that, especially considering this is a command grab character that has this as well. Um, that's pretty much it in terms of special move comparisons. Now, damage wise, I'm just going to list you some numbers here as opposed to showing you. I did double check these before. Um, Kano's high does 313 damage uh, off his standing two. Nightwolf's standing high punish damage is 194. So Kano, in fact, I, I will show you some of these. Um, Kano obviously gets this. We've seen this combo 100 times. Now... Obviously, for two bars, it's 346. Not really worth it. But for the one, it's 313. Whereas Nightwolf's high punish option is pretty much this. So Kano does more damage off of a standing traditional punish by a, a generous amount um, due to replicating the extended strings. Uh, they both have a combo launching back too. Whereas K Kano's is a 14 frame this. Uh, he manages to get, if I get this right, this is actually kind of tricky. There we go. Spending a bar. He gets 270 off his back too. Whereas Nightwolf gets, um, it might take me a few tries for Nightwolf because it's kind of kind of tough. His back two is 17 frames. And uh, again, this, this might take me a few tries because this is actually kind of tricky. This is optimal for it. Okay, there we go. Now if I spend a bar on this... You get 272, so um, Nightwolf does uh, slightly more of his back two, um, but it's there, you know, and you do obviously get the massive advantages you are ending with in the Amplified Command Grab. Uh, from Corner Jump Kicks, because again, these, these are two characters that don't really launch traditionally a lot of the time. Uh, their launching and opportunities are quite situational. Kano, off his Jump Kick, manages to get... Four. Again, these are all one-bar combos because, you know, that's the most consistent you will see. Uh, 370 off his corner jump kick, whereas Nightwolf will get less um, because, again, he just doesn't do as much damage across the board due to the combos themselves. However, he definitely doesn't tickle. I have Nightwolf's corner damage down to 348, so let's see if I can do that again. I think this is what I did. I'm going to spend the bar here. Oh, 355. So um, he gets even more if you get the additional down one. So they're not looking that different in corner either whereas Kano if he wants to do that has to let them out of the corner to get his extension for bigger damage Nightwolf can end in that command grab jump over them and put them back in the corner Nightwolf definitely wins in the corner as well and off of the down two uh, I'll, I'll show you this just just quickly because this will take a little bit of time um, Kano gets 423 off his down two mid screen for a bar and 467 in the corner this will be 467 yep and uh, Nightwolf in the corner will get this. Again, I, I've definitely played more Night, uh, Kano than Nightwolf, so it might to be a little bit longer for his. There we go. Is that enough? I think that should be it. I have this down at 425. What have I forgotten about? There's something I have. Oh, because it's not a down two. Hang on a minute. Sorry, I'm, I'm confusing my, my dumb ass self. All right, this should do it. Yeah, so um, Nightwolf is doing a little bit less in the corner. But again, you have the same situation. You know, you let them out of the corner again, just like Kano does. But you can jump over them, push them back in because you have the advantage from the amplified command grab. So even though Nightwolf is losing a little bit of damage across the board, him having the option to always end an amplified command grab means that he as a grappler is always going to end in your face no matter what. And that is so important for command grab characters and one of the weaknesses for Kano. If you want to go for max damage with Kano, you have to sacrifice corner positioning to do it. Your advantage is kind of there, but it's not quite as scary as other characters. Whereas Nightwolf gets any launcher, whatever, be it his crushing blows, be it his back two, his jump kicks or whatever. He is always going to be able to end in that amplified command grab to let him do his game more. Now let's talk about the throw game. Uh, both characters have uh, crushing blows on both throws. I haven't got to show you that because you know what a crushing blow throw looks like. Kano gets a little bit of advantage from both of his throws. He can be in your face, but he can't ch he can't chase down every wake-up option. But he can be close, but he can't be every wake-up option. 
Um, off of both throws though, so that's quite consistent across the board no matter what. Whereas Nightwolf uh, gets massive, massive advantage off of his front throw. Huge advantage to just stay in your face as you're getting up. And his back throw sends them away. So he gets massive advantage from his front throw, but none at all from his back throw. Which, for a grappler, means there is always that mind game. Whereas Kano's throw techs are pretty much a 50-50 most of the time with those crushing blows on as well. It's more of a guessing game for his throws. Nightwolf having a better front throw than his back throw means that his crushing blows, I would say, are a lot more likely to hit because your opponent, if they know the matchup, is much more likely to tech that forward direction, which is going to give you a lot of back throws, which would give you a lot of escape failed, which is going to give you access to your crushing blows a lot faster. Whereas Kano, it's a bit more of a coin toss to hit with, you're going to get it. Nightwolf players have a bit more control over the mind game aspect to their throws because they know their front throw is better, the opponent is likely to know that, and tech accordingly. So I would say, again, that gives Nightwolf the edge. Uh, don't worry, we are getting to the last couple of points here. This isn't going to be like a 40 minute video. Um, but tick throws. You can't talk about two command grab characters and compare them if you're not talking about what they tick off of. Kano ticks off of his standing 1-1, one, one, so this will go into a command throw. 2-4 goes into a command throw. His down 1, down 3, and down 4 all will do it. I would demonstrate it live, but unfortunately the AI can be a little bit finicky about showing it off. Um, but this is obviously 1-1 one, one goes into this. There's a gap there, so it can be OS'd. Um, if your opponent knows that there's a gap in the finished string, and that actually leads me to where this is quite dangerous uh, for Kano players to enforce the command grab ticks off of strings. 1-1 one, one and 2-4 both tick from strings that, when finished, have a flawless blockable gap. 1-1-2 one, one, can be flawless blocked, and 2-4-1-3 can be flawless blocked, which means that both of these strings, your opponent can option select neutral crouch and a flawless block timing to both duck the command grab and flawless block the final hit of the string, which makes going for both of these a lot more dangerous as the Kano player. And it's not like you have mids to condition them either. The big thing Kano has is he's got decent uh, tick throw op options on paper, but he doesn't have the mids to really force you to respect the neutral crouch. Whereas, you know, Nightwolf, you can't just hold Crouch against Nightwolf for days because his 11 frame back 3, his 13 frame advancing hit confirmable forward 1. Kano doesn't really have the same means to stop you from just neutral crouching all the time because, I mean, he doesn't have the mids to do it. Uh, especially his poke game as well, you know, doing it off down 1, down 3, down 4. It's all good on paper, but now let's talk about Nightwolf. Nightwolf ticks off of uh, 1 by itself, which again, we've established that 1-1-1 one, one, one is one of the better strings in the game as being something your opponent is going to fall for throws for. It's safe by itself on hit. It's hit confirmable. One can be tick thrown into, so you can do uh, this on block. One, one on block. So two of the three stages can be ticked from, and if you finish it, it's safe anyway. He can tick from his standing two, as well as his down one, down three, and down four. So this godlike down three that we've been talking about, he can actually tick from. So if he's really harassing someone with these and they're blocking on reaction, he's going to get command grab threats off of it as well. Um, as well as this string, the overhead option that he has, uh, the third hit of this string, I'll actually show you this one because it's kind of kind of weird looking. The third hit of that string, if I block this, actually ticks into this, which gives that unsafe final hit a mix-up off of it. Now, because that is, again, something that can be OS, you can, you know, learn the timing, neutral crouch the throw, uh, block the final hit in time because it is slow enough. It's just another option off of the overhead, right? which isn't even something that this variation really even needs. That's the, that's probably the tick throw you're going to see the least. But the scariest thing about this tick throw game, and again, one of the reasons why I see this comparison between the two of them so so well is this this is the Kano mix-up we're used to see, right? This is the Kano mix-up that we're seeing. Down one Kano ball, because when we're talking about how Kano doesn't have mids to force you to sit there and, and, and not neutral crouch all day, if he thinks an opponent is not just going to let go of block, after the down one, right? If, if your opponent's just going to sit there and block and crouch, and you think they're going to jump out of the tick throw like this, you know, think they're going to jump out of that, Kano players do down one ball to beat the jump or buttons, because it works, to enforce the down one grab. That's the 50-50. That's the kind of like unga bunga 50-50 that people talk about that Kano has. The down one ball to stop jumps and buttons, and the down one grab to stop the block. Um, this is a low damage, very high risk 50-50. Because obviously the command grab, you're going to get 130 or you spend a bar for 180, which isn't bad. But it's, I mean, you have to spend the bar, okay. Um, and on hit, if they get hit by the Kano ball, uh, this is going to be, I mean, we've established 157. 
So you're getting about, on average, about 15% per correct read. The problem is, they crouch the command grab, you get crushing blowed, you get counter hit, you get... They stand up and get their max damage on you. They block the, the, they block the Kano ball, and they're patient enough and they wait. You die in the exact same way. So you're putting your life on the line for massive damage every time. Nightwolf not only doesn't have to do that mix-up, he's better at it than Kano is if he decides he actually wants to do it. So let's say Nightwolf is doing it, and he's going for down three. If you think they're going to jump after the down three to get the grab, you do down one shoulder charge. And on hit, the shoulder, uh, whereas Kano ball is going to knock them away, and you lose your Oki, shoulder charge, you're right here. So you do low damage the same way that normal Kano ball does, but you're right in their face for some more Oki. If you want to go for this on block and they and they wait and they block the, the poke and the shoulder charge, uh, let, let me show you this. Let me turn this off. Uh, if 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 you want to sit there and go, right, I'm going to just block and wait for the shoulder charge and then I'm going to punish. Let's make him do this, shall we? So let's say he does this. You block. You get hit by down three tick grab and you're like, oh, I'm not getting hit by that again. So he does down three this. I'm going to jump. Oh no, I got hit by shoulder charge. So this time, you do what all people do against Kano that Kano players think is going to happen and say, he's going to, okay, I'm just going to block the poke, wait for the Kano ball, and I'm going to punish the Kano ball. And he's going to get hit by just the last hit of the Kano ball. We've seen that happen all the time when this will happen. In fact, I'll show you that exact situation right now. When Kano players will do down one ball, amplify, you block, block, and then you try and punish the ball, get hit by the amplify, right? This happens all the time. It's a 6% hit, right? And you have a little bit of advantage. That exact same scenario with Nightwolf, this is what happens. Wrong button. Into launch, into full stun for whatever you want. So not only does Nightwolf not have to resort to such desperate mix-up tactics as Kano, if he wants to, he does it better than Kano does. Because his shoulder charge is about the same damage meterless, but gives him advantage no matter what. And if he's going for that kind of like post-hit game for just the amplified bit of the charge instead of the Kano ball, he gets a crushing blow for it. And again, even if you don't have a crushing blow, mad knockdown advantage. So that's a huge thing, because that's, that, that's, that's a mix-up that Kano has to enforce. Crushing blows. Nightwolf wins. That There's not even a huge amount of point going into this. Kano's crushing blow is 25 frames. Um, it is fatal blow, sorry, fatal blow, not saying crushing blows. Kano's fatal blow is 25 frames, super slow, do is, doesn't combo from anything. If you, if you hit confirm it off a forward one spit, it scales and does barely 30% damage. His standing, it's hard to combo into it from juggles. You can't guarantee it off of breakaways. If you do launch into a fatal blow, you can never guarantee it. And if you do off of, you can guarantee it off of two, four grab and it's like, just frame it's like the hardest thing the character has to do it's just not very reliable and you can't reliably get through projectiles with it either because it's just too slow nightwolf his is stationary but it's 17 frames you can guarantee it off of launches to stop them breaking away you can confirm into it off of massive strings to get a lot of damage nightwolf just has a better better fatal blow that's literally all there is to it and now the final point of the video crushing blows kano's crushing blows are and i'll, and I'll bring the easy crushing blows back on for this the forward four, which we've established, your opponent has to block late for that to hit. So that's not something you as the Kano player have any control over. Back three, this is not going to, if, it, if it's a counter hit or punish, it will work. You're only going to get it as a counter hit. You know, if you, if you shimmy and, and catch someone pressing a button, this is good. You know, it's a safe button, leads into decent damage as it ticks for quite a lot. Obviously, cr uh, crushing blows off of both throws. And the command grab if it punishes a wake up roll. Realistically, this is not something you can really control over. It's kind of hard to, again, influence whether you're going to get the crushing blow throws or not. Because, again, you don't have the mids to stop people from just neutral crouching all game. To do that, you have to constantly throw your life on the line for Kano balls. So it's kind of hard to get normal throws for Kano. Because, again, it's he, he's, he's weak to just being crouched. And these throws, your opponent's going to crouch them. Because they're going to know that this is a huge part of your damage. Um, the command grab does work off of certain setups. It can be used to punish rolls on hard, hard reads. Obviously, if you miss the roll, you will get punished for it, but that's kind of your fault. And I'm not talking about the universal down twos here. I'm talking about the ones that the characters have that is core into what they do. Um, Nightwolf, much, much better crushing blows. If this punishes, which is a new string, he gets a 30% punisher, because this is going to tick for 10%, and that's going to do 31. And that's a punish or a counter hit. Very easy to get it. It's off of a decent high. 
the shoulder amp, as we've talked about, if, if just this part of the shoulder hits, he gets a full launch, which means that you can jump in um, and then do whatever you want. You know, that's that's not optimal. I dropped it, but you can get, you know, close to 300 damage off of that if you want. That's really strong. Uh, this string, universally, if just the overhead hits, that's going to launch for a crushing blow, which means, again, you get damage. Again, I don't have a huge amount of execution for it, but nice launch of a decent damage and that is, is a safe button and the three one is staggerable so you know there is the idea for that to hit uh at times uh, his command grab also crushing blows if it's used as a reversal punish so if someone does an unsafe move you can punish with that for a decent amount of damage 170 into an another 10 percent ticking damage for decent advantage and obviously if you because you have the advantage if you do manage to land this crushing blow you are going to be close enough to establish your wake up meaty, you know, 111, which you can turn into more damage, which is going to have ticking damage on it, or you can throw. Um, overall, Nightwolf just has a lot more crushing blows and a lot more practical crushing blows than you're going to hit. That pretty much is the end of the in depth comparison, right? I really wanted to be thorough with this. I'm sorry if this kind of went on a little bit. This is more of a theory video, and I hope that this has somewhat kind of shown you my my thought process behind this idea behind the two characters i just i look at everything ripper does and i don't see why you would you would you would pick that over ancestral gift when the most you can argue is he gets a bit more damage under certain circumstances whereas it's not like damage is just the clear-cut best thing right nightwolf will have better advantage he's got better buttons he's got better oki he's got better crushing blows he's got better fatal blow he's got better projectile the reflect is better than the parry his 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 highs are easier to use better to hit confirm and the biggest thing of them all ripper's huge weaknesses to just being crouched all game because he doesn't have the means to really stop people from crouching nightwolf doesn't have to worry about and even if the nightwolf player is doing the kind of potato mix-up that Kano players have to do to make Ripper work in the down one Kano ball, down one command grab. Nightwolf even does that better as well. So uh, don't please don't take this video to be that I'm hating on, on Kano at all. I'm a big fan of the character, but I just wanted to objectively look at the two characters side by side and just kind of show that I mean, that's it. Ancestral Gift is just better. But I don't want to be the, the authority voice on this. This is where the video is going to end. And I want you guys, let's chat in the comments about it. Do you agree with my points? Do you disagree? I want to see what you think about this. Because I think it's quite interesting. And if you like this video, I would like to compare a bit more characters in the future in such a fashion, if it's appropriate. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next video, whatever it may be. Peace out.